I may have missed it, but I just want to ask, I know you threw a lot of numbers out, especially on the earnings or the loss of future earnings. So can you talk about how new or uh, recent some of that stuff is from and how uh, maybe is trending what you, what you may see as uh, the, the future trend maybe the next quarter or between now and the end of the year? Uh, those numbers were uh, from three days ago, believe it or not. Yeah, I, it's, we, we really try and keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on as far as the, the 30,000 foot fuel where, where employment's gonna go and the female market's you know, especially important to us. So uh, three, believe it or not, three days ago, Newsweek did an amazing article about how COVID has impacted women specifically. So those are, those are three day old numbers. Um, and the, the, I guess that I can't answer, are they trending up and down? Because it's gonna depend on the individual going back to work. There's a massive push, like we're um, right now, we're working with a huge, I can't say their name, but we're working with a huge corporation to bring a mental wellness plan in for them. Uh, they have 200,000 employees. So they're gonna slowly bring in, that. they're gonna bring back those 200,000 employees over an 18 month cycle. So somebody might go back tomorrow, somebody might be stuck at home for 17 more months. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell where the trend's gonna be. It seems like the government is working aggressively towards getting everybody back. But then again, you get the caveat. I mean, in Canada, you still can't go to the gym. So, you know, depending on where, where our viewers are sitting right now, it could be very different. But um, I mean, I gotta think with the way I see the trend going that they're trying to be as aggressive as possible to bring people back. So I would think over the next six months is where we're gonna see whether this trend goes up or down. You know, because it's going to be the experimentation. It's and again, the greatest fear of doctors and virologists is as soon as all these people go back to work, there's going to be another outbreak. I mean, immediately. And it might, it, it won't be COVID because everybody's well. A lot of people will be vaccinated, so it might not be COVID, but it's going to be COVID 22. It's going to be you know the common flu. It's going to be the air of avian flu. There's so many things out there floating around that could attack us now because we have no immunity anymore. When you walk around with a, a mask for a year, when you don't physically touch humans for a year, you are not going to your immunity system is going to drop to nothing. So that I think is going to be the greatest judge as to how fast we can bring people back is, you know, if in the next 30, 60, 90 days, we bring, you know, 4.5, 6 million people, whatever back in and half of them get sick. Now they're all calling in sick. Now you see the economic impact again. I think that's gonna be the real judge. What would you say if people wanted to know either for, uh, I know you talked at the beginning that, you know, uh, a lot of coaches and kind of entrepreneurs are on this call, which they, which they are. So would you say either for, uh, say, an individual solopreneur or uh, any of the businesses you work with, you've noticed any particular trends, uh, especially in mental wellness that you think you could speak to as far as like, oh, uh, we've noticed a lot of people are dealing with this issue and this is a quick, easy fix or something like that? I, I think the number one thing we're seeing is uh, a term that's called stress resilience. Um, Harvard, Yale, MIT, uh, Johns Hopkins, you know, most of the major research hospitals and research uh, universities are going very deeply into gut brain access and the inability of a human being to adapt to their surrounding unless they're able to release these chemicals that we're talking about. So that's, that's sort of the definition of stress resilience is are you able to still function under stress? Because stress is going to be there. I mean, we're all humans, we got kids, we got jobs, we got, you know, you name it, spouses, pets, you know, injuries, whatever else you're dealing with, you know, work stress, everything, you know, stress isn't going to go away. I don't care if you're the richest person on the planet or you, you know, you're in line for bread. There is stress in your life, your ability to adapt, your ability to not have it stop you from goal striving. That's the important part. And that's where we're seeing the biggest move of the needle is that when we're able to take our clients and allow them to resist the drawback of stress, they're much more able to just function, just general functionality, you know, because now the anxiety's dropped a little bit. Uh, if they're dealing with real depression, I mean, if they've got real chemical issues with depression, that depression is often, often, uh, excuse me, often tied to the stress of what's coming next. So depression isn't exactly just what you're sitting in now, it's the negative anticipation of what's to come. That is stress resilience. That's, that is the dictionary definition of stress resilience is being able to handle the next thing coming to you. So whether you're the happiest person on the planet or you know, depressed and, and falling apart, it's how you are preparing yourself for the next stress, problem, tragedy, whatever. That's where we're seeing a big move. So that's where we wanna um, 
get you guys thinking about that is, you know, if you can be more resilient to stress, everything else in your life is just going to work better. And again, it's mechanical. It's a purely mechanical aspect. I really like that. Uh, I guess that idea of that uh, there's a mechanical issue there with kind of the operation, you know, uh, it's kind of like a car, you know, it can only go so fast if it has certain components. And if you want it to go faster, you have to change the components or add things or do something like that because you've kind of maxed it out. But if that doesn't land for someone, is there another way you could talk about that so that maybe if people aren't grasping the, you know, mental health is mechanical thing, uh, mm -hmm. how else would you be able to describe that to someone without that mechanical word yeah. perhaps? Uh, what we've always heard is that people have happy chemicals, sad chemicals, you know, it's everything is hormone driven. That's, that's, that's been no mystery. Endocrinologists have been making their career on it for the last 50 years. You know, everything in your life is controlled by a release of hormones. What was often thought of in the past was the release of hormones was completely controlled by the brain. And it's really not. The brain is a catalyst to allow the release, but it's not where these happy chemicals originate from. So, you know, taking all the science out of it, let's just use the term happy chemical. I don't even, you know, it doesn't matter what the name is. If you're not releasing happy chemicals, you're, you're going to hit a threshold point. I mean, it's like Shane said, you know, if you've got a car with a carburetor and you put your hand over the top of the carburetor, air's not going in there. It can only go so fast. If you have the ability to release happy chemicals and somebody puts their hand on top of the happy chemical jar, you can't be happy. That is exactly what I mean by mechanical. It is it's exactly that. I mean, literally, you are mechanically unable to reach your peak happiness. And again, more importantly, I think, is your peak stress resilience, your ability to not freak out over what the next thing is to come down the line. That makes sense? I think that's helpful because especially like when I heard, heard you say that the first time, that was the first time I'd heard someone use that term and it made sense to me, but I think especially when you're introducing kind of a new way of looking at something that sometimes people scratch at them like, hmm, I've never heard that before. I don't, I, I get, I kind of get it, but I, yeah, you know, so uh, I, I think that's uh, definitely helpful. So I, I know we have a couple of people on the call and before I bombard you with questions just for myself, I want to make sure that if they have any thoughts or questions that you can just jump in and talk directly to Melford. Yeah, please. And please keep one thing in mind. I did not invent any of this stuff. The only reason I know it is because doing my Harvard research, doing my MIT research, doing my research on what's going on with Yale. This, uh, I, I am not the super genius that invented any of this. I've just been lucky enough to interview some of the biggest people on the planet that do it. So I, I am merely regurgitating the, the process and the research that's going on at the greatest research places on the planet. Hey guys. So now that I, <laughs> I hope you can hear me. My connection is not great. Um, so I get your, I get the, 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 the general idea of what you're talking about and what is your actual product is what I had in, you know, are you, are you, is it a, you're talking about, you know, helping your gut. Um, so you're talking about a food supplement, you know, microbiology, um, what's, what's the actual solution to the problem, so to speak. Well, what we found is that supplementation of specific ingredients is going to be your, your hook. Uh, there's a company called Amare that is based out of California, and they've done a ton of research into the ability to not change your diet, but see a difference. If, if I can, I want to tell you a little story because this is kind of what inspired me to want to do it. 23 years ago, I lost 150 pounds. So I was a you know 350 pound fat guy, whole package, and decided one day that I wanted to lose weight. I'm not gonna extend the story because I, I could turn the story into an hour. But the, the gist of the situation is 350 pounds, knew that at 30, uh, I was what, 26 years old, 350 pounds at 26 years old, knew I was just a walking heart attack, knew you know things were gonna happen very quickly in a very bad way. Uh, ended up having a, a life-changing event that made me decide I was gonna lose the weight. You know, toggle switch moment, totally changed me. What I discovered was, the diet I chose to use was called the zone diet. It's, I don't even think the books, I don't even know if the book's still around anymore, but 30 years ago, the hot diet was the zone diet. And 
come to find out that that was based on the Mediterranean diet, which that term didn't exist back then. That was, that was not in our lexicon. Nobody talked about a Mediterranean diet back then, but that was what the zone diet actually was. The reason I'm telling you this point is that I lost a bunch of weight that first month, but then I hit that same uh, obstacle that everybody does when they're doing a diet is they get to that depressed state where, you know, I want to eat real food again. You know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that. And the other thing, this diet sucks. I got to go back to eating my normal stuff. But I was so headstrong and so driven to change my life that I pushed through that. And what I discovered a few weeks later was my mood started to elevate. I started to feel less bad. I started to feel less stress. I started to feel actually good. And what I found out was it was the friggin' Mediterranean diet. So I had changed my diet. I had started a gut brain access diet without even knowing it. And that's, we're actually writing a diet book right now about this fact that the key, the secret to getting to massive weight loss is to getting yourself to the point where your brain makes those adjustments and starts releasing those happy chemicals again. When I was 350 pounds, I was living on McDonald's or whatever else. I was, you know, living on a horrible American diet. You know, I was in sales, so I was drinking. I mean, the whole package, I was doing everything I could to ruin my gut. In saving it through the diet, I discovered that by adding these ingredients from the Mediterranean diet was changing the way my mind worked and automatically releasing those chemicals. So it allowed me to reach the goal and, and I lost 150 pounds in 14 months. But it, it started with willpower, but where the willpower was solidified was when my brain started releasing those happy chemicals again. So uh, a guy named Dr. Sean Talbot is a, um, a microbiologist who works for a company called Amare, and he has done all the, he's a um, MIT guy, uh, he's done all the research into how to supplement that same feeling, how to take the Mediterranean diet and put it into a pill so you can allow your body to release those happy chemicals without changing your diet. Because I mean, let's be honest, nobody changes their diet. You know, I mean, we all want to, but again, we all hit that same thing. You change your diet for three weeks, you feel like garbage, you're depressed. Next thing you know, you're eating a loaf of bread or a dozen donuts and you revert yourself right back again. This will allow you to just use a supplement to make that change. So did, did that answer your question, Russ? In yeah and no. I mean, okay. so so your your product, the Amare product, is what you're saying. You're you're saying it's a supplement that you're you can you know it's your solution. Your solution is a pill. So don't change your diet. You keep keep eating crap, um, but you can heat your supplement and it sorts everything out. Please change your diet, but I know you're not gonna. How's that for an answer? Because I've seen it too many times. <laughs> I, I've just you know, a master certified trainer, been in the fitness industry for 20 years worked with everything from elite athletes to old ladies. It's just how it is. But again, I mean, I hate to keep beating this dead horse, but it's a mechanical issue. They are mechanically getting to that point during the diet where failure is built into it. They, tr their body tries to purge the garbage, they get depressed, they fall off the wagon and they get right back into that vicious cycle again, where if we can just get them past the boundaries. So the caveat is if they do stick to the diet, no, they might not need the supplements. You are absolutely right. If they have the willpower, the strength, and the guidance from a coach like you to actually do these things, then they may do them. I'm just being a realist and knowing that 90% of people that start this thing fall off the wagon within 30 days, and I don't want all those people depressed when I know that they can take a supplement that's going to help them. Was that, was that a little closer to the point? Yeah. I mean, so basically, it's a, it's a supplement. That's the, that's the product. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a supplement that's going to align your gut brain axis to make it so you can release your happy chemicals without having to change your diet. Okay. I'm trying not to make it a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so it looked like Complete was going to jump on before. I just want to check. Did you have something you wanted to ask, Malford? Well, it's actually, I wanted to just... Um... Well, I think um, Russ answered the, um, asked the question. So what I was, so I didn't know it was a supplement. I was thinking it was more about educating people about, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it was about educating um, people on their Mediterranean diet. So that's what I got from it. But now I understand from what Russ has asked. Yep. But what I wanted to share is that, 
um, having work, worked with clients and doing detoxing myself with a nutritionist, mm -hmm. I found that mindset is very important and understanding the emotions, as you say, being able to release the happy hormones. But what happens is people relate the, the sweet and the sugar to um, happy because they want a hug. So it's like when you kind of educate them to say, well, you just want, you're feeling lonely or you want a hug, so you're going for something sweet. So I'll give you a little story. So um, when I'm speaking to my nutritionist, I wanted some, I wanted crisp or biscuits or crackers. I don't know what you'd call them. Um, bisc I don't know what you call them in the States, right? right? Cookies, cookies. But yeah, but savory, like savory stuff, right? And so I just wanted to... <laughs> wanted to crunch so she said to me are you feeling frustrated and I was like how does she know that so she related you know my feelings and my emotions to to that that action and, and wanted to get that kind of sensation from the food so I was thinking along with your supplements wouldn't it be good to be able to educate people about the emotions and what it is um, why they want something savory so salt then suppresses your emotions so if they're eating a lot of salt they may not be able to experience the full range of emotions and to get to that happy place by discovering what was making them unhappy or even discovering the lesson to say aha uh -huh, moment do you know what I mean oh, you're, um, you're making the perfect point and, yeah. and it, it, it's you know it just keeps coming back to that same thing the reason why I'm talking to, to you guys, to this audience, mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. you're serving clients. Yeah, so yeah. so th this isn't to, I mean, of course, I want to, you know, I want you guys to feel great. So I'd like you to try the supplement if it works for you. But the most important yeah. thing is I am trying to help business owners and coaches because this is part of that process. So mm -hmm. with, without that process, without, that's where the point of failure comes from. And, and again, I, I hate to be a realist, but that's why the vast majority of people never reach the goal they want because mm. they don't have the mechanical aspect or the part you're talking about or the guidance. You need yeah. to have the two. And that's why this presentation is specifically for the Solve Network because you are people who are solving problems for other people. So, okay. so I want to help you to have every tool in your quiver to help your client. If you've got a client that's 100% on board with everything you tell them to do and they adjust their diet and they stick with it for six months, you, they very possibly could be releasing all these happy hormones without the supplement. Okay. I, I'm just talking to that 90% of people that just end up falling off the wagon a little too early for either, what, for whatever reason. So the other question I wanted to ask you then um, is, so they take the supplement, they're releasing all these happy hormones, yeah. Is that going to help them to then get up and do, or does it, or will it encourage them to say, I'm okay, jack or jane where i where i where i'm at and not do anything and then exasperate their health conditions or not being able to interact i wanted to know how does the supplement actually enable them to get up motivate and do the necessary um do you know what I mean? does that oh, make completely. sense oh completely yeah? you're, you're, you are speaking exactly to stress resilience that that is stress resilience is a what holds you back from what you're going to do next. So that's what actually keeps you on the couch because you're worried about what's going to come next. But it also allows you to have that drive to do more. One of the things that, that dopamine actually does is provide human drive. The drive to achieve more comes from dopamine. So if they are not producing dopamine, they don't have the internal drive to do it. And it's not their fault. It's not like they're choosing not to do it. They are physically unable. You know, it's like, that's the one of the things that, that we see so often with mental wellness and mental health. It's hard mm -hmm. to pin down. You know, it's not a broken arm. You know, it's not a cut that you stitch up. You it's, something, it's something very ethereal. So it's very hard to say, okay, what are we going to do? We want to have motivation. So that's what dopamine does. It provides motivation and the yeah. ability to not be as concerned about what's going to come next being the worst thing in the world. Does, does that make sense? Right. Now, so I've got another question because I've got, a, I've got a, 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 a range of clients, yeah? So I have clients who are... Um, suffering from bipolar mm -hmm. along with other things yeah so we know that bipolar can have its extreme highs yes. and then its extreme lows mm -hmm. so would this supplement be able to 
bring them to a balanced state where they're in the middle or they, do you know what I mean? I just, okay. want, I just wondered yeah. how that works for them. They, they may still need their pharmaceutical. I'm going to be very blunt. That okay. Asking, okay. I, I just wanted to know. Anybody, yeah. Yeah. I, I never ask anybody to drop a pharmaceutical that was mm -hmm. given to them by a qualified doctor. But what yeah. I want them to do is I want them to combine the medicine and then go back and have their doctor test them three months later. That's then, where we see the greatest impact, whether it's reducing the amount that they have to take, uh, whether it's just taking it right out of the formula. But this yeah. is telling folks that have, uh, you know, we're dealing with folks who have addiction issues, you know, folks who have very serious psychoactive problems. It's so that's why we say, you know, don't stop taking whatever your doctor gave you, take these yeah. together and then let your doctor be the judge of how much progress you've made. You are certainly going to feel better. And again, stress resilience, the ability to not be worried about the next thing down the road. Make sense? Right. Yes. Yes. That's good because yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. So then in other words, they'll be able to, their, mo their doctor can monitor them and say, well, okay, we can decrease Absolutely. the pharmaceutical. Um, yeah. And that's what, that's what I really would love to see in a lot of my clients. Yeah. Um, and again, there's the, the, the ones that have high blood pressure because of stress. Um, I've got a family member who's in hospital now. I'm just receiving messages from having a stroke, very oh. young, you know? So it's well, like, want things to be able to help because yeah. people are suffering these things at an even younger age, you know? You know so these ailments, and as you say, it's not visible, you know? It's not visible, so it's like, how if they're not expressing them their um their pain or what's going on for them how do we know so maybe giving them the supplement without them having to express Completely. and maybe go into that that situation where they may not be able to un, um, understand or unpack mm -hmm. the whole what's going on for them maybe an answer yeah okay it makes it makes more sense to me now thank yeah. you what we see often is Antidepressants make you feel less worse. Mm -hmm. the natural release of happy chemicals make you feel better. There mm -hmm. is an incredible difference between those two. They are mm -hmm. not even in the same ballpark. So, you know, because I want to speak specifically to your points, you know, so our goal is to, I, I again, I don't want to play doctor. So I never want to say that we want to take somebody off their pharmaceutical, even though that's what I really want to do, but I want them to have less side effects. I mean, think, think about the side effects of antidepressants. The worst side effect, half of them don't work. I mean, I don't know if you guys know that or not, but 50% of antidepressants end up in another prescription for an antidepressant because it didn't work. What does that do? That puts a double load on your liver and it puts a quadruple load on the availability of side effects. Side effects like impotence, side effects like weight gain. What is gonna make you more depressed than being impotent and gaining weight? I mean, it, it's like, I, I, I just can't wrap my head around how much more depressed you can get. So you're compounding medicine on, on top of medicine, on top of medicine. Now, again, we're making it so you're making it, so making the uh, client feel better, not feel less worse. So that's the mm. first step. Two, norepinephrine is what controls your heart rate. So anybody mm. with blood pressure issues, the, the natural release of norepinephrine is going to give them an exponential increase in their body's ability to control their heart rate and their blood pressure. So again, trying to get them off of these meds. And again, I'm not going to tell you to do it, but they will see a mark. When they go back to see their cardiologist, I bet dollars to donuts that they will see a marked difference in their numbers because again, their body is naturally releasing the norepinephrine, which is what is supposed to control it. You're not supposed to be controlled by a drug. Your body is supposed to control itself. The drug is forcing your body to do all sorts of weird things that it was never designed to do. We mm -hmm. want to get that completely alleviated and just allow your body to maximize what it was already naturally made to do. I mean, we were made of these perfect creatures for a reason. We just screwed it up ourselves by eating wrong, by drinking, by not sleeping, by getting in fights with our spouses. We're the ones messing up our body. It's not our body that's messed up. So the yeah. addition of a drug doesn't help. Let's just maximize our body's ability to do what it was designed to do by our creator. I love that. I, it's funny. I received a quote today. Um, the world is not happening to the um, to us. We are happening to the world. And the same could be in, you know, to in the state of how we're being and what we're doing to our bodies. So, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. OK, well, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks Complete great question. Great questions. Thank you. Okay. I expected great questions out of you. 
flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm an old guy. I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you for I'm that. Wrong. My pleasure. So I see we just had someone join the call a little bit ago. So um, you missed the presentation earlier, but we're in uh, kind of open Q&A section. So if you have anything you'd like to ask Melford, who's the guest expert today, feel free to jump in. Well, thanks so much. Just tuning in really for the first time here in this Pono Quest chat and uh, just getting my roots with it. But uh, I, it popped up and it felt exciting to come on. So just happy to catch some of the energy. Awesome. Thank you, Matthew. I was so afraid that you were going to see the ask us anything on the screen and you're going to ask me like the square root of 743. <laughs> well, that's a great number because uh, 43 is a very special number for me. So there you go. <laughs> Thank goodness you didn't ask me that question. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Melford, I'm going to put you on the spot here because we've been talking about kind of the, the trends and things you've seen and your experience in various kind of peripheral industries to health and wellness, but what have you been most challenged by and how have you kind of moved past it, especially in terms of supplementation or otherwise for your mental health? For me personally, having been a gym owner, uh, having owned two supplement companies myself, uh, it's going to sound funny, but something's not working. It, it just drives me crazy how many products are on the market that don't have the science behind them. I think that's, you know, the reason I got excited about this was because I met the people from Yale, because I met the people from Harvard, because I, you know, I mean, the guy from MIT is the one who actually formulates the stuff. Like I'm a geek. I, I am a diehard science geek. So first and foremost, I have to see that the science aligns. I have to see that it's being used in hospitals and practices around the planet. And then I want to see results for myself. And I started taking these supplements about four months ago and I am sharper than I was before. Cause hey man, I've been living through COVID too. I mean, granted I own a couple of businesses, you know, I, I have to keep my hustle pretty high. You know, I, I'm on calls constantly. I'm being interviewed all the time, but I noticed it just, you know, I wasn't sleeping right. I wasn't eating right. I was drinking more. I was doing all the same things that I've been complaining about this whole call. And when I started taking it four months ago, I realized that the first 30 days I started feeling a little better by 60 days, I felt sharper. And at this point, it's been four months and I just, I, I feel better. I just feel sharp. I feel crisp and ah, I feel a difference. And it, it sounds funny to say that because, you know, it, obviously, you know, I'm telling you guys about stuff that we work with, but um, I've just seen too many supplements that don't work that, you know, you take it for a month, you feel great, you stop taking it, and you still feel great, which means it wasn't really the supplement. It was just something else that changed in your life. You know, if you don't see a marked difference between when you start something, give it 30, 60, 90 days, and then take a, take a few weeks off. If you don't feel a marked difference, it's probably something else in your life. Try and be scientific. That's if, if I can give any advice about supplementation, um, honestly, about anything to do with physicality, you know, I'm a master certified trainer. So physicality means a lot to me, you know, working out properly. You know, when I tell somebody to try something new, I tell them to try it for a month, give your body a month to try and adapt to this thing and then change completely and see how it works. Same thing with food. If you want to include, you know, if you want to start using the Mediterranean diet, make yourself do it for a couple of months and then don't do it for two weeks see how you feel. So the, the best thing you can do is just be scientific with your own body. You know, me as a 260 pound, 50 year old guy is going to have a completely different feeling than an 18 year old, hundred pound girl. So, you know, you are your own best test. You have to be your own litmus test for every product, exercise, food, therapy, meditation, everything you do is going to impact you individually. So give yourself the chance to be scientific about it. Don't take something for a month, give it up, feel no difference. Or, you know, if you feel a difference, then just say, oh, well, whatever, you know, give yourself that time, be scientific about everything you try. I can say for myself that I, I do a very similar thing. I, I do one month on one month off as a comparison and there have been the, actually the only thing I can think of in, cause I'm in my mid forties mm -hmm. and it was probably, I mean, high school, college, I was a, you know, cardio warrior as one of my coaches used to say, you know, is run more, bike more, as many miles as possible. And I was constantly just destroying myself, you know, no recovery, but those were the days of, you know, power bars and energy drinks 
and it was you know pretty much carbs. I remember when the Zone Diet came out, and it was revolutionary because everyone was like, "No, fat is the devil. Like it's eat as much carbs as possible, a little bit of protein, and zero fat." Yeah. And so the idea of no, 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 you want to eat some fat and maybe less carbs. You're like, what? That won't work. But I think the biggest thing, and I'd like you to talk about this next, is if someone has that kind of mindset, we're like, well, uh, as, as Dave Asprey, who does Bulletproof, likes to say, uh, people look at things like, well, that can't work, and therefore it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So how can people, if they have one of those mindsets of like, uh, fat is bad, carbs are good, and any diet that is outside of that won't work. So therefore, I'm not going to even try it. So when you talk about experimenting, being a scientist, you know, trying things for 30, 60, 90 days and then cycling off and comparing. But if someone's kind of averse to that, and they're like, nope, I'm not gonna compare. I know it's not gonna work. How can you invite them to kind of experiment and try things? Because as you know, you can't have the breakthrough unless you try something different. You know, it's the, the scientific aspect is hard for some folks because they've never challenged themselves. And, I think it's always going to come back to that. Somebody who has never challenged themselves in their life, you know, in, in any aspect, you know, I'm not, not narrowing down to sports, not narrowing down to, you know, academia, not narrowing down to business, anything like that. If you've led a fairly challengeless life, then you are probably going to slide through and not try and challenge yourself at this point. But I think if everybody just looks in their past and finds one place where they challenge themselves, it could be when you're a little kid learning how to ride a bike, or it could be the new job you got last week. If you just look back on one place and challenge yourself, you will see that that challenge has allowed you to move your life forward. I don't know if anybody's uh, read Psycho Cybernetics, but uh, the Psycho Cybernetics talks about the winning feeling. Um, Dr. Uh, Maltz is I mean, just a genius, one of my favorite books in the world. If you haven't read Psycho Cybernetics, please read it. It's super long and very complicated, but it's an amazing book. Plastic Surgeon talking about mental wellness. So like really cool. But the, the point I'm trying to make is that he says, anytime you feel depressed, look back at some place in your life where you won. Doesn't matter if it was winning a spelling bee when you were two, winning the Olympic gold medal, find a point in your past where you won and bring that entire feeling forward. Bring the emotions of what it did. Bring the emotions of the results you felt. So that is what I would love people to do is if they feel like, you know, I'm not up for this challenge. I can't do this challenge. Whatever their mental block is, Please do this one little exercise. Look back in your past. Find a moment where you won, where you were successful, where you were so proud of your achievement. Manifest that into your soul as much as possible and then steer that towards this new goal. Steer that towards, I want to feel mentally better. I, want my, I don't want to catch a cold or flu because that's something we haven't even talked about yet or even uh, more so is the immunity aspect. You know, 70% of your immunity comes from your gut health. So, you know, let's just take mental health out of it for a minute. If you don't want to have colds and flus and everything else, if you're going back to school or back to work, you are going to have challenges with these issues. So that's even another thing to think back on is I want to make sure that I'm moving into this environment as healthy as possible, not even emotionally and psychologically healthy, but physically, I don't want the flu. I don't want COVID 22, 23, 25, whatever the next thing is going to be. So these are the things that I want you to think about is think back on a time you had an amazing experience emotionalize it, and then point it towards that new goal. And if that goal is the science of moving your body forward, that's the new goal. If that new goal is having a 500 pound deadlift, that's your new goal. Whatever your goal is, if you can find a way to find that past and emotionalize it, you will figure out a way to at least move in the right direction. So I never heard of that book. Thank you. I just put it in the chat and it'll be in the show notes as well. And for those of you who are new to the Salt Network, we are partnered with Poto Quest. We're going to be putting out actually our three years of history of this show as a podcast starting in June. So you can catch up on all the experts we've had speak over since 2019. Uh, but we also have a mailing list you can sign up so that you can see upcoming speakers as well as potentially be a speaker yourself. And joining us on the live call is an excellent way to get your questions answered because you can speak to the guest expert once one. So I'll put that book in the show notes, which leads me to the next question is, do you have any other recommendations, either a book or, or even a film? I know there's a lot of great documentaries in the health and wellness sphere, uh, especially diet and nutrition that you might be able to share so people can you know, learn more. Uh, quite often, 
I mean, you know, these days there's podcasts, there's audiobooks, there's all these different ways. And I know everyone learns in different ways. So if you had kind of a one or two things, maybe each one is different, you know, one yeah, book, one well, movie, one podcast, something like that, it might be helpful. Yeah, the, the first person I'd like to uh, recommend is Dr. Uma Naidu. Uh, Dr. Uma is the head of Harvard, uh, Harvard Psychology Department. And I was lucky enough to interview her probably about six months ago. And she is leading the way on how your food impacts your life. You know, really everything about the gut brain axis, everything about the microbiome. She is the pinnacle expert. Um, she has been interviewed by every news guy. She, she's gained a lot of traction over the last year because she just released a book and God, I can't remember the book. I feel so bad. I can't remember the name of the book. Food. It's not food is medicine. It's somebody else. Anyways, I'll, I'll remember it. I'll, I'll give it to you for the notes, but uh, Dr. Uma Naidu. And again, I'll give you the spelling because it's kind of a funky name, but she is so cool and so smart. Uh, she is a, a um, chef. She's a psychiatrist and she's a, a microbiologist. So she just has such an unbelievable strata of expertise within this. And again, she's really out now. So you'll see her podcast everywhere. She's being interviewed by every news show you can imagine. She's got a new book out. So Dr. Uma is amazing and so cool. She will answer any question you find. Uh, another, the guy that actually taught me most of this stuff, uh, Dr. Sean Talbot. Uh, Dr. Sean just came out. Man, you're asking me about books that I can't remember the names of because his book just came out. I don't even know if it's uh, being printed yet. Uh, his, um, his publicist sent me a, an early copy of it. Uh, he is really leading the charge on the supplemental uh, end. So uh, Dr. Uma is more food therapy bias. Dr. Sean is, I hate to say it, but kind of more on my way. Like I know people aren't gonna change the way they eat. So we wanna have a supplement for them. So th those are the two experts that, I, that I've learned most from. If, you know, what, everything I have said to you, I've learned basically from those two people and doing interviews with them. And I'll give you their, their names and spellings for the uh, show notes. So I just had a, a thought come in, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, if, if people are willing to do the work, they're willing to change their diet, they're willing to change their lifestyle, then some of this stuff may not be needed. But I think one of the things that's important is that's kind of for the normal person. But if you're a world-class athlete, if you're a high-end entrepreneur, if you're doing 16 hour days, if you're on stage and you have to have that exceptional output, not normal output, but high end level performance, you can't just have the normal amount of nutrition and the normal amount of supplementation. You have to have additional in order to have that additional output. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, higher quality gas, better performance in the engine. So can you talk to that? Because I think a lot of people who are part of the Solve Network and part of PonaQuest and that are wanting to go into that higher level output lifestyle, you need to understand that sometimes in order to do that, uh, you need to upgrade your system, so to speak. That's one of the reasons why I love Dr. Talbot so much, because he works for the IOC, uh, the International Olympic Committee. Uh, he is the microbiologist for the American Olympic team. So no, I, I've never met anybody that's done more food-based biology for peak performers than Sean. And uh, that's why I like him so much. I mean, he's a cool dude anyways. He's a, a Northeastern guy like me. So we get along really well. But uh, he has done so much research into peak performance that that's why I, I like to listen to him more than anybody else. Because, you know, Shane, it's like you said, you know, when you're a peak performer physically, let's just talk the, the physical strata right now. Like, you know, um, football player. You know, if you're a professional football player, you're putting in about 10,000 calories a day. A lot of folks don't realize that. They don't realize the incredible capacity of food that a peak performance, either combat or, um, or even endurance. I mean, I, Shane, I could ask you this. You know, somebody who's an Iron Man, you know, or, I mean, they must be eating an enormous sum of calories just to keep up, J just to function at the lowest level. They have to have a, an enormous amount. So now let's take it back to everybody else. And again, I, I'll go back to peak performance, but everybody else, we all know that our food has gotten worse. We all know that the soil has gotten worse, more pesticides, more of this, more, of this. no matter how much we fight GMOs, no matter how much we fight all this stuff, there is still a vast majority of food out there that's under nutritious. It will not provide the nutrition we need. So you can either eat your, you know, 30 servings of vegetables right now, instead of eight when I was a kid, you know, now it's tripled or you can supplement. 
So now let's bring it back to the peak athlete. The peak athlete that needs 10,000 calories a day just to sustain cannot have that extra to again, reach the peak performance. We want to optimize performance. I don't care if you're you know, a person at your first job at McDonald's, whether you're an Olympic athlete or whether you're a mom at home with six kids. If you are not eating enough food, you're not getting all the nutrition. Even if you are eating enough food, you're still probably topping out on the nutritional value. So you may need that extra. Now, if you're an ultra competitor where, you know, 1% can be the difference between gold and bronze, that 1% will only come from supplementation. I mean, we all know it. it's, you know, look at every sport, every sport comes down to maximizing diet, maximizing rest, maximizing training, and then supplements to get everything pulled together. So for peak performers, it's kind of a no brainer, uh, you know, a CEO who's been stuck at home for 12 months and now has to go back. I mean, think about what's playing in their brain. You know, a woman who runs this huge company has been home for 18 months with her kids. Now she's getting thrown back in the mix. That's peak performance. So no matter what she's done, we want to give her that edge to be right back into place. And, and to bring it back to my story, like I said, you know, I consider myself a peak performer. I own several companies. You know, I'm a jujitsu black belt. I'm a former national champion in weightlifting. You know, I've been a peak performer in several things, but I felt slower. I did not feel like I was quick. I was losing a little of my edge. And then after four months of, again, supplementation, I feel better. I eat right. I just don't eat enough. It's just kind of being an American human. So I was doing some research on the side. So uh, this is from a 36-time Ironman finisher in the triathlon. Wow. They said, so the average person will take 10 to 12 hours to complete an Ironman and require a minimum of 2,500 calories to a maximum of 5,500 during the race. Wow. So not even before. Yeah. They're talking about, <laughs> you know, while you're biking, swimming, and running, you need between 2,500 and 5,500 calories to keep going. Yeah. And that's the, the not talking human... about pre-fuel. That's not talking about recovery. Right. That's not talking about the day before, the week before, the week after, the day after. That's on the day. Yeah. So- and the, and the average American eats less than 2,500 calories their entire day. Yeah. So you have yeah. to eat those during the, during the race. It's just- Right, yeah. So, so again, if you're gonna be at that high level, you need to start thinking about how can I have my supercharged high-end output? Well, I probably need some supercharged high-end input. Yeah, well said. So we're coming up into the end of the call. I wanna give you a chance to put a spotlight on anything coming up or anything else that you're a part of that you'd like people to know, as well as how to contact you or reach out for uh, questions in the future or anything else you may have. For what yeah, absolutely. So, so guys, the, the reason I left this slide up was just because I wanted to leave that call number up for you. So you guys can contact us anytime at melfordagachetta.com forward slash call. That will bring us to our calendar link and you can book your call. And we, were, we wanna to talk to you about anything. It doesn't matter what you're trying to improve, uh, improve your performance in daily life, family life, sports life, business, anything we can do to help is what we want to do because we are really realizing again, after talking to so many experts that people are mechanically unable to reach what they need to do now. And I'm talking about today. You know, I'm not talking about 10 years ago when life was pretty good. I'm not talking about five years from now when life is hopefully going to be pretty good again. I'm talking about today when people are still suffering, still worried, still losing people, still not able to go to the gym. The impact you want to have is on today, and that's why we are so we're so thrilled to be able to talk to you about the mechanical mental wellness aspect because it's foreign. People just don't understand that you can turn a knob. Your hormones, your hormone release is a knob that you can control simply by either eating right for an extended period of time or by supplementing by doing these things. So we just want to give you guys the ultimate opportunity to maximize your life today while things are still bad. When things get great, we'll be talking about something else. We'll be thinking about how to maximize other aspects of your life. But while people are suffering to this level, we just wanna help right now with anything we can do to make people feel better mentally and perform better. Well, I'll turn it back out to the people live on the call. Are there any reactions, questions, thoughts before we wrap up here in the next few minutes? I'll just say, um, Melford, uh, your energy's uh, impeccable here. Oh, uh, clear, clearly comes across. Uh, 
you know, in terms of what you're doing works. And I, I looked up um, the, the um, Harvard professor there, uh, I think Uma, yeah. Um, uh, awesome. This is your brain on food. So uh, yeah, th this is really great information. Um, I just kind of jumped in, in the middle of it. So uh, not sure the whole aspect, I missed the whole presentation, but um, I'm super excited to do a little bit more research here based on what you've shared. And um, yeah, I'll definitely follow up with you. Uh, I'd love to have a connection. That's awesome, Matthew. Dude, I started as a geek. My, my thing was I wanted to geek out on the science. Once I, once I believed the science, then I tried it. It's just how I'm wired. I, I'm a science guy first. And I was just lucky that I got to, so I, I was doing uh, interviews for a summit and Uma was one of the people on the summit. Pure stroke of luck that I got to befriend this lady who is a friggin' super genius and changed my life, honestly. So wow. I did the same thing as you. I did a little bit of research. I found the science. I liked it, tried it, worked, good to go. Now, now, I'm, now I'm an evangelist, <laughs> which Amen. is how it should be, right? I mean, isn't that, <laughs> isn't that what a, a movement in your life should be is when you make a move forward and it works, you got to evangelize. You got to tell everybody else and help them out. 100%. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us live on the call. And if there's no more questions, I'd like to thank Melford for coming back and Again, if you missed the first call, this is Melford's second time on the show this month, which was a special two-parter for Mental Health Awareness Month. And you can go to YouTube and look up the Solve Network and see, I think we have like 600 videos out. So every speaker has a presentation. We also kind of drip out some snippets of the conversation so that you can kind of find a question and answer, so to speak, in a you know, little bite-sized chunk, you know, five, 10 minutes, something like that. So I encourage you to go on there and see the first part where uh, Conchetta was on as well. But also know that if you go on the mailing list, you can get a direct link once the video goes up, as well as the show notes, which I, took, I take down for every speaker, as well as see who the upcoming speakers are. And as I mentioned at the beginning, these calls are generally the first and third Thursday of every month. So they do happen on a regular basis. And if you can't join us live, being on the email list means you do get those recordings, but we always encourage people to come on the call because it does give them a chance to speak to the expert directly and get their questions answered. And of course, we're always looking for new experts. So if you would like to come on and have a kind of safe place to practice your signature talk and connect with other people, we'd love to have you on as well. So thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you all on the next call. <laughs>